Today is going to be my biggest challenge yet as a painter. I thought I would have, you know, one more lesson fully painting the interior of a car. How you paint the exterior of a car and then the interior of a car and an engine bay, the approaches to that are so dramatically different. Um, so I learned a bunch from Randy actually last night for painting the engine bay. And we were not able to finish painting the interior last night because the booth was way too cold. We had to keep turning the fans off so it wouldn't get colder. Today is the warmest that it'll be in Florida for the next week or so and Randy is out of town. So that put the job on me to take advantage of this day. Wish me luck, I'm gonna be just going for it for the first time on my own for the interior of the car today. I wrote down a bunch of notes yesterday with Randy and I just gotta go for it. deja vu to me. I feel like I've been in this paint booth for years. Last night we did finish the engine bay though and it looks amazing. Yesterday it was about 40 outside and today it's gonna be about 65. So I have a lot more wiggle room to work with. We're still gonna be utilizing the space heaters in here, probably getting it all the way up to like 85, 90, turning the fan on, shooting it, and then we shouldn't be at too bad of a temperature by the time I'm done with different coats for here. I need to put my big girl pants on, which is why I put my big girl painter suit on and we're gonna get this job done today. Engine bay looks amazing. We only did one coat of clear on the engine bay because I'm gonna be covering this part up today. And at the very, very end, after I have one coat of clear on the full interior, I'll take the cover off the engine bay, wipe that down, and then reshoot the entire car together with one more layer clear. For now, most important task is that I need to get this car soft again. I need to get off all of that overspray. Now you can see it really dramatically on the floor because we were not prioritizing the floor. So you can see a lot of the overspray very, very easily, but on the cage and a few other areas, it's still rough. So what we're gonna do is take 800 grit sandpaper. I'm putting a scotch bright pad or just any sort of padding on the back of it so it acts as like a cushion and it's less abrasive than like your fingers being directly behind the sandpaper. 800 grit on top of a scotch bright pad and we're just going to lightly go over. Basically everything and you can feel it immediately after you sand it and feel the big difference. So, let me see. Right here, it is textured. I can easily feel that. And now, you can feel that that is smooth. So, I'm gonna be doing this basically around the entire car. You know, I really need to make sure that I get the cage good. That's gonna be right in your face. One thing to note is that this entire time, we're not going to be prioritizing the floor just because I do have carbon fiber floors coming in from HGK that will cover each side. If it gets overspray on it, it's, it's okay. And let's get into it. inside where I need to stand at least to get to everything. So everything up there, insides of all the roll cage, trans tunnel, all of that. To get all that stuff, I've been standing on the passenger and driver's side because again, it's not priority. And when I get out, I will go over these areas that I'm standing in. I can finally come out now. Um, Randy did say that we would be fine just spraying it down with water and wiping it out. Oh my God, look at my face. But I don't trust myself 
to not make a mess everywhere in the booth and fully get all of this dust out of here. So Chris and I are gonna push the car outside of the booth, blow it off, then go over it with water, blow it off again, then push it in here just to be extra, extra sure. Chris is sanding the back of the car. We're actually almost done. It's not too bad, it's just tedious. We're almost done. We're getting through it. I hate sanding. We're done. the car thank god we did that there was so much other debris trapped in various areas so we blew it out and vacuumed like the majority of it but we still want to go over it with water wipe it down get up anything else that should be left on the surface probably blow it out one more time and then push it back into the booth i just want to paint this thing already out the booth and move all the debris to each side with the fans running. So the booth is all good. We're gonna push the car in, get our heaters in here, leave it baking for a while. And then it's baking. Look at Mr. Muscles. fully set up. Heaters have been going for a solid like hour now. Our booth is up to temp. I'm gonna have Chris tack rag the entire thing before I get started. And then we are good to go. I'm so freaking nervous, but I'm just gonna put on my confident face and pretend like I got it and hopefully it all works out. Luckily, when Randy was here, I took a bunch of notes. First thing that we are going to start with is mixing up our white sealer. And then go over the entire car just one more time to fill in any low spots where that black was bleeding through. Make sure everything is even and good to go. It should only take one coat of our sealer. For our sealer, we want it in its lightest form. So right here, that ratio is four to one to two. So the four is our actual KD3002, which is right here. It's our white sealer. The one is the actual hardener. So that's the KDA3000 that is right here. And then the two is our reducer and we're using a medium reducer for pretty much everything today. On our measuring cups, the four to one amount is right here. So if I filled it up to that six, four to one from there would be right underneath one up to there. You held me back when I tried to move on from your life so you stole my life with clarity. So hold me back, now you're here cause I'm mad, show no fear.
I was just getting paranoid about the temperature. Immediately when the fans turn on, you can just feel it dropping, so that kind of got in my head a little bit. But I think it's gonna be good. Uh, I'm gonna let that cure probably for half an hour and then tap rag it and go over with the neon. Chris was hyping me up the whole time. You're like, get it, get it. You did good, you did really good. So. Yeah, it was scary. Why, what about it was scary? The temperature, you're like impeding doom. Just, you can just feel the temperature drop, 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 drop in the air and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, go fast, 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 fast. It was safe. Yeah. I did safe and well, today's a lot better than yesterday. Yeah. Like today we have 10 more degrees outside. I think it's about like 68. 65, 69, yeah. 65. In the past two times that we painted, it's been like 40 outside. So temperature outside at least is on my side today, but we gotta finish this up. So we're gonna wait 30 minutes and then start adding our neon. Where is it? Oh, right here. And then it's neon time. It's been 30 minutes and you can just tell it's completely dry everywhere. I would say the hardest part in spraying the white and what I need to make note of when I spray everything else was getting underneath it. Um, there were some spots that barely had any paint on it at all. I kind of had to like lay down and shoot upwards. And as you can tell, I am not prioritizing this floorboard on either side. It's time, this is, the, this is the scary part. This is both the scary part and the fun part. So we're gonna bust out some neon mix it up, and then just go for it. But first, we're gonna tack rag everything that I just painted. Basically gonna be doing this in between every single full cure of a coat. How's the color, neon chartreuse, ND508, with our medium reducer gonna reference the notes that I took. So for our neon base, the mixture is gonna be two parts paint to one part reducer. So that's two to one. Has a 30 minute cure time and gun settings are gonna be the same as before, 12 to 13. Booth, it had already dropped down to like 
64 and we started with the booth at like 84. It's just a little stressful because I'm trying to go fast but I think that went better than anticipated and this next coat really needs to bring the neon alive so I'm gonna mix it up and then we should be good. You can see where I didn't really get to dust that side of the tar, mostly the cage before I ran out of paint. So I'm gonna hit that first so that hopefully when I'm done hitting everything else, I can go over that one more time. I looked around, I didn't do any runs in the paint that time, but it was pretty low risk with this being the lighter coat. This next coat having to go in heavy, that is where it's gonna start to get risky and I just need to make sure I keep an eye on the paint to make sure nothing's building up and starting to run. And we are now onto our third cork of neon. time I was trying to go so fast you guys but the temperature was just plummeting temperature had already dropped to like 60 so I'm gonna do one more coat what it looks like right now there's still a few areas on the cage that I just need to get better and I want to just do one more coat so I'm not crazy rushing throughout the end of it but that means we're gonna have to let it sit for like 25 minutes tack rag the whole thing one more time and then at least going into this final coat of neon, I'm not gonna be like as frantic because I know I have a lot more time. Overall, I'm like pretty stoked on this job. I was trying to see if I had any runs and I only found one area where I went a little too ham and got a run. Where is it? Over oh, right here. Right here is literally so far the only area that I can see a run when the neon chartreuse starts to run it actually just turns like a normal shade of yellow which is not what we want but the good news is i got my only run where it's going to be completely covered but it's still really good practice for me to try and get the run out especially since it's in a non-crucial area so i'm going to try out the tape trick that mike showed me when he was over here now lightly. I got some of the run off. Honestly, I might have waited too long and it got too dry, but I hit it with the tape. I'll sand over it a little bit with like 800 and then just see if I can blend that in. Are you guys starting to see the vision though? Look at it. All right, we're almost there. Last pass.
time. That is the end of our neon yellow. I'm pretty sure I got everywhere. For the most part, like, I think we are solidly neon, you guys. And I haven't fully inspected it yet, but I'm pretty sure we don't have any runs, which was my biggest fear. I knew I had to go heavy on this coat. So I'm looking around. I can't find any runs, I don't think. I'll show you that one that I had fixed. I fixed it pretty decently. I think I waited a little bit too long to do the old tape trick. If you do it right away, I think it'd be a little more effective. But again, you're not gonna see this part of it, but I did wanna practice like fixing a run. But I can't believe I didn't get a lot of other runs. And it looked so done. Look how neon, bro. <laughs> Love it so much. So now I'm just going to let it cure for about half an hour, let the booth get back up to temp. And I've decided to do something that is a little challenging. It's going to push me as a painter a bit. You notice how we taped off the car. You'll see that we left part of the door jams exposed that go all the way to where the skirt is colored right here. Right here on the exterior of the car, this is like an orange to pink fade. And I'm gonna try and dust on some pink into these door jams right here so that the outside that's more pink goes into orange into the yellow in the car. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm basically gonna try and fade part of the door jam so that it fades to what the exterior color is. I know it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think it'll work. My biggest concern is really just overspray on the rest of the cage, but with the prism and everything, I think it'll end up blending in. I just need to go pretty easy right here and just put the color on and call it a day. So with the prism. Mm, I love it so 
much. And to all the comments, they're like, why are you putting this much effort into a car? It's a drift car, it's a drift car. Well, number one, it's my drift car. The settings matter to me. I like to see a vision through when I have one. We're waiting on all the bits and pieces to put this car back together, which will start arriving next week, so why not make my dream car? And I'm learning, and I'm having fun learning with everything, so I don't know. I get that question a lot, and I know it's gonna get beat up. It's a drift car. Like, it's meant to be driven hard, and might as well make it look good when I'm not driving it and waiting on parts anyway. I like building cars. I like building a vision and seeing it through and just doing some wild and funky stuff that you don't normally see in a drift car or a race car and I'm just having fun with it. I'm really, really stoked with how it's turning out. We're almost on the home stretch. In between every single paint change, you have to clean the gun out. So this is just an example of like a little thing that I would totally overthink if I wasn't taught the right way to clean stuff and how do you know when it's really clean. I just tend to be very over analytical and that just causes you to be more paranoid than needed. So one of the things that you have to do in between every different color is clean it out. Now we have this machine right here that is actually meant to clean your guns out but it's not working at the moment. So we're just doing it the old fashioned way which is basically running paint thinner which is what we have right here. You just run it through the gun over and over, make sure all the color is completely cleaned out. I take that nozzle tip off as well, drop it in the paint thinner, just clean it out with a rag and inspect everything. which is our effect right here. And we mix the effect into this. This is our effects carrier base. It's S200, also called their Trans Nebulae. I just like the name. Our recipe for this, if we go right here, is three to one. So we're gonna have our cup here three to one plus 10% reducer. We go here, this is our three to one plus 10%. So right here we would fill our trans nebulae would be all the way up to the seven mark. The effect would be all the way to this seven mark. And then our reducer would be all the way to that seven mark. I love these cups. It makes everything so much easier. I love this prism. Look at that. Look how pretty. All of the colors. Ooh. It's so beautiful. dangerous to use a narrow fan because it can turn the neon yellow silver real quick. Um, so I tried to monitor that in the beginning. We'll let this dry for a little bit and then we'll bring our phone light around and try and film up close. You can't trust her with prism. Anything holographic, you can't trust her. She just wants to keep Well, I it. also can't trust this booth. <laughs> Alright? His booth, you can't see the prism. You, I literally can't see it on a field. I gotta feel you gotta the prism. Feel the prism. <laughs> I gotta feel the prism because this booth just messes with your eyes and like you can see. You can't unless you have a flashlight, which apparently that's a thing. It's called a sunlight, and you're supposed to use that when you're painting. Yeah, it looks good. I thought that I mixed up way too much prism. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be saving half of that 
for next time. Colette, let me see. Let me see. Colette! <laughs> we got like nothing left. So. I knew it. I mean, a little prism don't hurt nobody. I used a lot, bro. That was a whole cup. I have the flash on, so you guys should be able to see our prism effect a little bit better. Once I get the clear over everything, that's when it's really gonna pop. You can still see it a bit, just with the flash. Let's see, get close. Oh, there she is. There's the prism. There's the prism. <laughs> We've been sitting here for two hours. Show the victory. Victory. At least someone's winning. <laughs> <laughs> it is too late to be waiting this long in between coats. We're not even waiting for it to dry. We're just waiting for the booth to heat up. <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps blowing all of the sockets. Shh. I'm not, we can't put that in there. They're gonna know that I'm f this whole compound of gone electricity. It's a basic space heater. They're tiny and they just keep blowing. Uh uh. Look at all the cords. Okay, well, we're gonna go look at the temperature. Out now. of there. Come on. We gotta get this clear on so I can go to bed. I'm about to fall asleep. It's late at night and I'm about to tackle the hardest part of this whole thing, or at least what I think will be the hardest part, which is the clear. Now I'm only going to be doing one coat of clear tonight. I'm going to let the car cure and sit overnight because if you remember, we only did one coat of clear on the engine bay. When I come back tomorrow, I'm going to uncover our engine bay. We're going to slightly stuff up the entire car, blow it out, and then lay down a thick last final coat of clear across the entire car. So let's do it. I, I, gotta, I gotta wake myself up. Once upon a time I had nine lives. I could take the front and back the same night. I could be a party girl or a guy. Whatever I wanted, that was my life. I don't wanna brag it my stilo. More like only talking to my pillow. I had plenty, I had twenty rings on my feet, though. I even look good in some speed. We're what falling apart. We need this clear on this car stat. We are losing it. We are losing it. What you gonna do? Mm. What you gonna do? pressure on the gun started tweaking out. You could hear it audibly because the hiss would go louder, softer, louder, softer. The digital readout on the gun that shows you the PSI kept tweaking out, going up and down. I just had to keep changing it and feeling it because I had already started the clear. Like we waited hours to have the booth up to temp and I just had to make the most of it. So I did the best that I could. I don't see any runs. I was trying to lay it on thick and it was just, it was just a nightmare. I just had to keep feeling it out and adjusting the gun. I think I got most of the car covered. I just, I did not like how it was coming out of the gun, but I just had to send it. I still think I managed to lay down a decent amount. I did my best with what was going on. So we're gonna leave the car here to dry overnight and just see what we're working with in the morning. What you, you gonna do? Yeah. What you, you gonna do? Bye bye. When I was a kid, I had mad tricks. I the kids to look and be like, oh shit. Now I'm motion chill and think. Hmm. Why I still do not? regulator on the gun and that seems to have done the trick and fixed it honestly especially with having those issues I'm pretty proud of myself like 
I didn't get any bad runs anywhere. Oh, look at this. I thought I did pretty good. First, I'm gonna uncover the engine bay so we can see the full effect of everything together. been scuffed up once all over and I took the tape and paper off of the side skirt so you guys can see that full fade transition here and so that I can get a last layer of clear coat over that as well so it really melts more into the outside. We're gonna push her back into the booth now, lay on our last layer of clear real thick and call it a day. Our temperature is about right to start laying down the clear. And I also have to leave in less than an hour to go catch a flight for California. So hopefully this goes well. I made up a bunch of clear that way Chris can just run in and keep bringing it out to me and I gotta move fast y'all. I gotta let it fit and pass. Wish me luck. I'm pretty stoked on how it turned out and I just cannot wait to see this thing in the sun. So this is where she's gonna stay to fully cure and dry off and I'll be pushing her outside for the first time, probably Monday or Tuesday when I get back. I'm actually feeling a lot better about laying clear. I was really scared going into it and especially on such a color like this, it's so bright and it's a lighter color. It was really, really hard to see it, but I think I did a pretty good job. I'm stoked on how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.